Good morning, everyone. I'm Councilmember Corey Johnson, Chair of the New York City Council's Committee on Health. Welcome to today's hearing on Resolution Number 1433, sponsored by my friend Councilmember Steve Levin, a resolution in support of state legislation to include the coverage of in vitro fertilization treatments in the New York State Insurance Law. Unfortunately, fertility issues are fairly common with about 12% of women aged 15 to 44 years old in the United States. Uh, they have difficulty uh, getting pregnant and carrying a pregnancy to term. Yet New York State Insurance Law excludes coverage for in vitro fertilization treatments. IVF is an incredible medical resource that should not be exclusively available to those who can afford the $15,000 price tag. Deciding to grow your family should be an exciting time, not a time to clean out your savings account. Resolution number 1433 calls on New York State to join eight states that already require IVF health insurance coverage by law. I want to thank Council Member Levin for his leadership in introducing this resolution and turn it over to him for a statement. Thank you very much, Chair Johnson. I want to thank you and I want to thank Council Member Ku, Council Member Mendez, Council Member Van Bramer, who is here. Um, I want to thank you very much for bringing this uh, resolution to the committee and calling on the New York State Legislature to pass and the Governor to sign Assembly Bill 528, sponsored by Assemblywoman Linda Rosenthal. The bill would amend the New York State Insurance Law to expand health coverage to include in vitro fertilization. Um, as you said, becoming a parent is a joyous occasion. I was lucky to become a parent this year. But for many, the pathway to becoming a parent is marked by loss, frustration, and high medical bills. 15% of heterosexual and same-sex couples seek out and use IVF. But treatment can be time-consuming and very expensive. Just one cycle of IVF can cost between twelve dollars and $17,000, not including the cost of related hormonal medications a woman may also need to take. And many couples must go through multiple cycles of treatment. However, according to a 2016 survey, only 19% of large employers cover IVF, and even companies that do sometimes have outdated insurance policies that fail to cover same-sex couples. Unfortunately, there is strong disparity in the use of fertilization assistance, limiting the number of women who require and can access, and can access this necessary medical treatment. Eight states, including California and Illinois, currently require coverage of IVF, and it's time that New York State join them in leading the way for healthy families. And so I'd like to thank Speaker Melissa Marquerito and Ramon Martinez, as well as our drafter, Emily Rooney, my, legislative, my former legislative director, Julie Barrow, for their work on this resolution. Um, just on a personal note, um, my wife and I uh, went through in vitro fertilization, and um, we were fortunate enough to have um, Emblem Insurance, which is the city employee insurance, and we uh, also had um, um, uh, SMMP, which is major medical uh, uh, for, uh, for management in New York City, and we were able to get coverage. And if it wasn't for that coverage, uh, there's no way we would have been able to afford um, to, have, um, uh, to, to, to have the coverage uh, that ultimately led to our daughter being born, Francis. And so um, it's my strong belief that everybody that wants to have a family um, should have the opportunity to have a family. Um, and people facing fertility issues, it's something that uh, we don't often talk about and there's not enough uh, information out there in the mainstream and uh, and so we need to make sure that we are uh, have good information out there and that um, we mandate that insurance companies um, here in New York State we join with uh, uh, eight other states in the United States to mandate coverage and make sure that every family that wants uh, to grow has the opportunity to do so so thank you very much uh, thank you Steve in this should not be a partisan issue. This is about families. So, uh, any comments from any of my colleagues that are here today? Well, I wish they, I wish to be added to the resolution. Great. Councilman Mendez would like to be added to the resolution as well. And Councilman Baku would like to be added to the resolution as well. So there are no uh, advocates to testify here today. Uh, the legislature is coming back into a special session sometime this week. I'm not sure they're taking this bill up, but it's still important for us to be on the record whether they take it up this year or next year. Uh, it's important for us to pass this resolution today. 
we just have to make sure they see that we passed it. So we'll do that. Uh, with that, I am going to now adjourn this hearing. He didn't announce, did you announce I was here? Councilman Ravaca came in late. I did not, I was early, you came in late, not me.